So in case you were living under a rock yesterday, you know that Marjorie Taylor Greene appeared in court under oath to defend herself from accusations that she engaged in an insurrection insurrection and shouldn't be on the ballot this year or actually ever, because let's keep in mind, this is not just a decision that affects her this year. If they determine that she did in fact aid the insurrection or support it, she's officially never allowed to run for office again. So a big thing. Um, and of course, if you watched it, you saw her, uh, verifiably lie under oath, I think is the only way I can describe it because she was saying things like, Nope, I never did this. I never said this. And there was a lot of, I don't recalls or I don't knows, but the good folks on Twitter were very quick to find old video clips of her because she forgot to take all those down. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty easy to see that what she was saying in court was not matching up to what she had said on videos over the previous years. So if you wanted to hit her for perjury, I think that would be a pretty easy thing to do. But of course she's got a, a sympathetic judge, even though the judge at one point did agree with the, uh, prosecution to treat her as a hostile witness. So there was that, but for the rest of the time, it did appear that the judge kind of seemed to be on Marjorie Taylor Greene's side. Here's the thing. Even with all that ridiculousness <clears throat> that we watched unfold on TV, the most ridiculous thing happened at the very beginning of it. When Marjorie Taylor Greene's lawyer came out, stated basically their case. And this is what he had to say. Take a look. Our country's elected leaders were victimized right here in the very halls of Congress. Representative Green was a victim of this attack. Her life was in danger, she thought. She was scared and confused. Her children were frantic about what was going on and feared for her safety. That's right, it was Marjorie Taylor Greene that was the real victim here. She was terrified for her life. Her kids were scared, everybody. It was chaos. And she also, of course, refers to these people as political prisoners, says they're patriots and has fought valiantly to get them released from prison. So I don't exactly think that's the best defense to go with. All of her actions since that day negate everything that lawyer just said. If she truly feared for her life, she would not be showing up at the jail saying these people are political prisoners and this is unfair. She didn't fear for her life. In fact, Republicans actually mocked AOC who said she feared for her life. So, you know, really bad to start off your defense claiming that your person is the real victim here when there was plenty of video evidence that says otherwise. Oh, and uh, as to the main point of the case, right? Did she or did she not and encourage the insurrection? Well, as I mentioned, she didn't go back and remove a bunch of videos. And even if she did, they live elsewhere. So there's not much she could have done anyway. And uh, Brian Tyler Cohen dug up this gem that reminded everybody of exactly what Marjorie Taylor Greene was saying prior to the riot, which in my viewing of this clip kind of seems like she does want people to, you know, overthrow the government. Judge for yourself, that's my opinion of it, but here is this clip of Marjorie Taylor Greene before the insurrection took place. Take a look. America reelected Donald J. Trump for four more years. You can't allow it to just transfer power peacefully like Joe Biden wants and allow him to become our president because he did not win this election. It's being stolen and the evidence is there. There's a large group of us who are organizing an effort to object to the electoral college votes for Joe Biden in key states where there's real evidence that this election has been stolen. I am very convicted in what we're going to be doing on January 6th and it's historic and I feel it's very, very important. On January 6th, if you're able, there are going to be possibly a million or more people coming to Washington to be there for this historic event. It's critical for everyone to show up and show the nation who we are. We aren't a people that's, that are going to go quietly into the night. We are not a people that are going to be thrust into socialism without stopping it. Yeah, that doesn't exactly sound like the words of somebody that, you know, didn't want what happened on January 6th to happen. 
kind of sounds like an individual who may have supported it. And of course, I think the prosecution in this case, uh, which it's very weird to call them that because it's not necessarily a prosecution, but you know, the, the plaintiff lawyer uh, did a good job. And as time goes on, they're going to show more of these clips. They're going to basically try to nail her to the wall. And honestly, based on what we saw that first day, if we actually had an impartial judge, I would 100% say that Marjorie Taylor Greene is toast. I would absolutely based on one day of, of testimony here, I don't think she has a legal leg to stand on. The only hope she has is that that judge is biased enough in her favor, which I think is a very real possibility. That is the only thing that is going to keep her on that ballot. The defense lawyers were terrible. She was terrible. The prosecution uh, plaintiff's lawyers are awesome. That judge is the only X factor. And right now, it's not looking so good for the plaintiffs. Unfortunately, that could all change. The evidence could be so overwhelming that even a biased judge can't buy into it. That's just something that remains to be seen and has to play itself out in court. Hey everyone, this is Aspen. And did you know that for the low, low cost of $0 per day, you can subscribe to the fair and balanced YouTube channel. We also encourage you to like comment and share, but again, click that subscribe button and help Aspen oh, not be so grumpy.